you don't know who you are. The education we have does not make us confident. We've been singing in church, say, yeah, no, 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 they was my bosom. Our ancestors were worshiping stones, but we worship Jesus and we dance happily, insulting our ancestors. We are happy. They were not primitive savages. Somebody said they were, and we accepted it. Whenever I meet great people, I become overwhelmed because I get to learn a lot of things in life. You know what? Today we are meeting a legend. And I bet you don't want to miss any word from this man. My name is Honey and I am here with Be Bright. We are in the residence of a living legend. Prof, we are much grateful. Thank you. But Prof, how, how did you end up being a lecturer and how was life as a lecturer? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I have always been interested in, in African culture. And so when I came to the university, I did a lot of research. And I found out that I was learning more than I ever learned in school. I mean, I was in school from 1940 to 1965. Uh, you know, you know, that's a long time of, of studying. But I never learned so much as when I started doing research in Ghana, in our own culture and traditions. And um, I felt that um, it is our traditions that will make us who we are. In other words, we, our traditions must shape us, must enable us to understand ourselves, okay? Um, I feel that, I felt that um, if we want to build ourselves up, if we want to become anything, the proverb says, before a blind person can, you know, throw a stone at you, he must be standing on a stone. It means we need a foundation, a foundation that will give us strength and confidence, okay? And if we are to become a confident people, we need to stand on something. We cannot stand on borrowed culture, borrowed religion. The confidence must come from our own culture. But unfortunately, we seem not to have any faith in our culture. We, we despise our culture, we call ourselves names, we put ourselves down. And yet our culture is what is going to make us. Our ancestors said, every bird flies with its own wings. Eh? They are kind people say, Anumana wadin wadin tabemu. It is our culture. But that's the last place we want to look. You see, our ancestors said, borrowed water never quenches thirst. You see, so our confidence will come from our culture. That is where our foundation lies. And if we ignore that, we will be hanging, and we have been hanging for 64 years. We will not admit it, but the evidence is all over. It is people who lack confidence, who will live like the way we do, who will leave things in such a mess around us. You know, if we had confidence in ourselves, we wouldn't tolerate what we see around us. We would create an environment that suits us, an environment that reflects us. But the environment that you find has a very unfortunate reflection on, 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 on us as to who we are. So, as a lecturer, I was trying to impart these ideas to my students, trying to let them know the value of African culture, the value of African 
religion, the value of African proverbs, African values, African customs, because this is what will make us a stable and confident people. We will not admit that we are not confident, but it is true, if we are confident. What does the educational system do to us? You go from first grade to university, but what do you know? If you don't know about even the meaning of your name, you do not know the meaning of your name. You do not understand your culture. Hmm? You don't. You don't know who you are. The education we have does not make us confident. If it did, we wouldn't be facing such challenges that seem to overwhelm us. We know. So, self-knowledge, I believe, is the basis of all knowledge. It's the basis of confidence. And without confidence, we can't do anything. Where, where is the confidence going to come from? It's not going to come from a borrowed culture. It has to come from us, from inside, from our culture. Okay? And in all my uh, teaching experiences, I have found that the confidence I have that enables me to teach, to go to America, I've been to China, Korea, Japan, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, India, you know, and Taiwan, and all these places, giving lectures about African culture. That confidence I have comes from my culture, because otherwise I wouldn't have anything to say. But because I have studied our culture, there's nothing anybody can say that I cannot say. When I tell people about our proverbs and so on, they are surprised, but where is this coming from? Well, it's coming from our ancestors. It's right here. But we, we ignore the, the strength and the wisdom that we have. And of course, we, you know, we have, we, if, they, they say in Kenya, if you make yourself grass, goats and sheep will feed on you. We've made ourselves grass. We call ourselves pagans and fetish, and we even sing in church. Say, they worship my bosom. Our ancestors were worshiping stones, but we worship Jesus and we dance happily, insulting our ancestors. We are happy. They were not primitive savages. Somebody said they were, and we accepted it. Somebody can say they were primitive, but what do you say? And it is out of ignorance that we, we, we describe our ancestors as primitive savages. And of course, unfortunately, and this is to the young people, you see, we seem to be the only people who call their ancestors primitive savages, pagans, fetish, and so on. The Chinese have never called their ancestors savages or primitive people. So, Prof, are we on the wrong path? Yeah, definitely we are on the wrong path. We're on the wrong path because we, 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 we have chosen to, to, to live on a borrowed culture, but not our own. You see, um, our ancestors said, borrowed water never quenches thirst. That's an advice that we need to hear. Our ancestors also said, copying everybody all the time, the monkey one day cut his own throat. We've cut our own throats by copying everybody. We don't even know. You know? And our ancestors said, you don't borrow somebody else's teeth to smile. Smile with your own teeth. Don't we have teeth? Don't we have a culture? Who is to study it? Is it the foreigners who have to study it for us to go and read about it? Or we ourselves who have to delve into it and be the people who explain this culture to ourselves and to the outside world. So, we are on the wrong path because we believe that, you know, we can, um, we can live on borrowed culture. Everything we want, somebody will give to us, okay?